Yeah, I mean that, that's that's a great question because why why do broadcasters do it? It's because that's what they know, that's what they've heard, that's what they believe. That's because that's how they've been educated. They haven't learned otherwise. So I so I think that's that's you that's universal. That that can cross over into the business side. I mean, you cross over into the business side of of sports, which is a closer step to the, the business of business. <laughs> that you know the the earliest modern era trouble that we saw uh, sports leaders get into because of language was Al Campanis on Nightline in 1987 telling Ted Koppel that Blacks lacked the necessities to manage in baseball. And then when Koppel gives him a chance, he then goes into all the tropes that he has in his stores. Al Campanis was the executive vice president of the Los Angeles Dodgers. Um, this is on, on the 40th anniversary of Jackie Robinson integrating Major League Baseball. So this is supposed to be a a glorious kind of celebratory conversation. So Koppel sees, wait, what's this? What is this old white guy saying? Blacks lack the necessities. So he keeps asking questions, and, and Campanis keeps digging deeper. And when Koppel breaks for a commercial, and he, he basically he says, uh, "This is a great thing to Google if you have not seen this." He says, "We're going to come right back after commercial, and I'm going to give you another chance because I think you need it." And then when he comes back, Koppel says, and Campanis is sat to think of all the learnings he's had over all these years about black people. And he's going to tell this national audience, again, this is pre-internet, this is the last newscast of the evening for America. Everybody's watching Nightline. They want to see what this guy has to say. So Koppel says, no, no, you say they lack the necessities? What do you mean? He said, well, certainly, uh, Mr. Koppel, it's like, uh, why can't black people swim? They lack the buoyancy. So, so, so it goes on like that. But here's a guy who, uh, and, the, and the Dodgers, you know, spoiler alert, the, the Dodgers fire him the next day, which became kind of the pattern of what you do in these things. But here's a guy, this is a guy who grows up in, and I think he actually went to NYU, but he grows up in minor league baseball. He, he hears all this stuff. He's around all white people. These are th this is what he's learned. This is where his education has been. He's he's now a middle aged man, and he's got a, he's has this platform, and this this is what what he this is what he says. And I mean, years later, um, I became friends with with Dusty Baker, who and, and Dusty, you know, the great manager of the Houston Astros now played on the Dodgers when Campanis was around. And I said something like something to Dusty like, uh, you know, and that guy, Al Campanis, I said it's kind of hate hatefully. And Dusty said, hey, Ken, Al was the guy that the brothers went to. Al was, was a good guy. Al was just reflecting what he knew. So you know, so 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 the idea that in, in as, as sports broadcasters, as sports business leaders, as business leaders in general, the idea that we uh, we're very careful about this education and making sure that when we give somebody the power to do things, that they really do have the information that they need to make the right kinds of of decisions. That they're not relying on you know tropes and childhood stories and 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 in some cases, you know industry practice and protocol you know how do you how do you get somebody to to the new era to the new day and so they're not caught like you know he's a good guy uh, but he's just got stuff in his head and it came out and he had the power to put it out there yeah i think it's it's such a interesting line because i think it's what i always tell people it's not my line and my dad came up with it uh but it's present be yeah. present not perfect and that's really what we're asking leaders to do like it, I think one of the things that I've heard that, that seems so, very true to me is you didn't become racist or sexist in 45 minutes. It was a lifetime of experiences and reflections that you then picked up. I then can't make you unracist mm -hmm. or unbiased or unsex in, in 45 minutes. And so it's the understanding that it's a growth process 
right? They, it's going to take some time to, to unlearn those and realize, oh, even though I grew up like in your example around all these guys that were saying these different things about black people, it doesn't necessarily like you need to have the progress and engage in that. And the, the expectation is never that you should be perfect from day one. But the idea is you will be present and respectful. It doesn't mean you don't hold you accountable. Right? It doesn't mean you get a pass for everything, but it does mean like in order to get better, in order for us to move forward, I think we need more people remaining present, yeah. remaining engaged. Yeah, no, that, 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 that's exactly right. That it's, it's, you can only be in the moment that none of us are, are perfect, that th this is why, and, and this, you know, this gets to, you know, what big takeaways, what, you know, in, in this realm, in this classroom, this moment, big takeaway, training is not the answer. I mean, I, I hate, I hate to put people out of business because, you know, I, I don't do it, so, you know, Maybe if I did it, I'd be more defensive. Anybody that characterizes the work that they do as diversity training, I mean, maybe the RFP says that, so you got to frame it that kind of way. It's education. I mean, we're, we're, people are not dogs or seals. You're not trying to train. Okay, and whenever this happens, this is your reaction. And you get a little piece of kibble as a, as a result. Now get, get people give people credit. Give give you know that Al Campanis moment that I'm talking about. If if he had had training before he went on, that's not going to give him the depth to think about what what he needs to say in a moment with the kinds of questions that are that are being asked. So so the I think that's so the the, the presence. I mean you're you're so you're so right, and the idea that. If, if you have the consciousness in the moment and I, you know, and I will fail, you will fail. We got to give each other. And I, and I, I, I look back on, you know, Al Campanis was fired. Uh, Jimmy, the Greek Snyder was fired similarly a couple years later. Um, we can keep going, going forward uh, to uh, some of the more recent fires. I, I, I don't know. You know, I am more about the second chance in this space especially for people that that, uh, that are in a position and want want to learn uh, what what to try to do better but the idea that we can put somebody in a you know you got to do five sessions with this magical trainer and, and you're gonna be okay no it, it's a it's a it's we've got to do we got to do more than that and I think it's such a great point when you are having for our listeners out there that are looking to um, start the process of bringing someone in to help you with the first inclusion. I think yeah. it's a great idea personally. I think you need to be very strategic with what Kenneth just said, which is, are they coming in to give you a off the box training or are they coming in to educate? And remember like a lot of consultants and a lot of trainers that I've spoken with have tried to use that terminology, but it's oftentimes the business that has been trained, trained themselves or, or learned themselves that what, what I really want is a training. So, you need to look deeper. What are they trying to do? Are they trying to install? Because what we do here at Cape, we call them trainings, like Kenneth would hate us. But what we try to install is an organizational change method to move forward, right? We're trying to say, can we educate you to a system that will allow you to continue the progress of journey? Our job is not to train you. I'm not going to, that's why we say like, I'm not going to show up in a session, take the guy who you know, or the girl who you know, or they who you know, that is being sexist, racist, or in, insert your uh, behavior here and make them not racist. The point is, can we teach everyone how to engage consistently in difficult conversations, embrace the tension that lies in trying to get things right while not crucifying anybody who gets yeah. it wrong because we want to be present, not perfect. And Kenneth, I think you said it so, so brilliantly there. Um, I really, really appreciate that, that commentary. Thank you.